Welcome to our 52nd broadcast of Coping Live Talk. It just seems amazing that we've been doing this broadcast for a year. And you notice, if you saw the screen flash, we are missing two very important people. Pastor Lydia and Scott won't be joining us tonight because this is a travel day for them. They've been out of town for a few days. And uh, I'm so glad that I get to introduce to you Karen Gibson who's a member of the church who's agreed to be on the broadcast with me. I know that when uh, Lydia and Scott started this broadcast, they had no idea that it would be going on a, a full year. And I believe in that whole time, they've only missed a week or two. And so we so appreciate all the hard work they've done to make this possible and to make it work so well. We have uh, had so many topics on ways to cope and ways uh, to make it through the pandemic and how to find help. We've had therapists and we've had uh, we had college kids to talk to us about how they were coping during the pandemic. We talked about what it felt like to lose your job and how you coped with that. And uh, we talked about how you get medical help or uh, we've had authors on. We just had all kinds of wonderful things. And I'm so happy to have been a part of that. And so I uh, thank you to Pastor Lydia and Scott for starting this and then for bringing me on board. And I'd like to now go to our guest. Let's see who's here with us tonight. And there's Karen Gibson that I mentioned to you. She's a member of Francis Street First, just like I am. And our, our special guest tonight is Bill Luce. And if some of you are like me, you remember Bill most of all from being the coach of the most amazing rainbow teams in the whole state. And, and he really was that amazing and that wonderful. And and he had some fabulous teams. And I know how much they appreciated him at uh, Savannah. And so congratulations on that. But that's not why we're here tonight. We're talking about your new passion. And we're going to talk about therapy dogs. And we'd love to just uh, have you tell us a little bit how you developed this passion, how it helped happen. And I know you have your dogs right there with you right now so let's let's uh get to meet your therapy dogs okay so right. I'm turn it over to you thank all you right. well first of all thank you for having me i really appreciate it and i might add i i did you know i taught for a long time and when i retired in and i semi-retired 2003 and gave up coaching in 2007 i felt i still wanted to be active doing st something and and uh, this opportunity presented itself. We went down to Upco and we saw a group down there that was that was doing it. I had no idea. We talked to him a little bit. I still was not sure. Uh, we had a bearded collie at the time and kind of an active dog. I didn't know, you know, is it going to work out or not? We, we uh, thought we'd just give it a shot. And uh, it, it definitely grew on us. Uh, in fact, I, I would say next to teaching and coaching quiz ball, this is the most significant thing I think I've done. I, I, I enjoy it very much, but I do want to introduce the stars of the show, which are, are, are my, I have a therapy dog and one that's a training and I'll explain what those are in just a minute. But first of all, uh, let me show you Forbes, who is my greyhound and let him get in the shot here. Yes, Forbes is a, he, he is a six and a half year old greyhound and he was trained to race. He never did. Uh, he had an injury to his leg and that was it for him. I also think he had no prey drive, which Greyhound supposed they're chasing that rabbit looking thing around the ring and he never did it. Uh, but he is a, uh, he's an excellent therapy dog and we, he is, he's been doing that since we had him. We've had him for the last, uh, three, three and a half years. And we trained him within months to be a, a therapy dog. Um, and we'll talk more about that. And then I'll show you. Our little one here in training, uh, that's not your best side, Cypher. Uh, Cypher, is, <laughs> he wants to sit and look at me. Uh, Cypher is a whippet. There she is. Uh, she is, is uh, she is training to be a therapy, therapy dog. We've had her for two years now. She was all ready to go last fall uh, to, take, to, to become certified as a therapy dog in COVID hit. And that was it for Cypher for now. But we are beginning, as we will see here in a minute, beginning to uh, consider getting back open again. And, and we hope to have Cypher on board by this fall at the latest. So anyway, those are our two dogs uh, that keep us busy. 
uh, we are, they are a passion of ours. Um, anyway, that, uh, what we do, uh, I might mention a little bit about what a therapy dog is and what, um, how they're, how they're di differentiated between say them and a service dog and an emotional support dog because people get those confused all the time. Right. A therapy dog is a dog which is uh, trained to help other people by offering themselves up to be petted. Basically, it's pet therapy. It's what we offer. You might think, well, that's very simple. You know, what, what therapy can you get out of that? Well, they've made science, they've made studies, and they have found that blood pressure when you're petting a dog is lowered. Uh, you have a better, you have a heightened sense of well-being. Uh, stress levels go down. Um, conversation goes up quite often we found out so there's a lot of positive benefits coming from from uh, therapy dog work um, a service animal on the other hand is a dog that is trained to help an individual with specific need uh, they that's a, it takes a long time to become a really trained service dog for an individual uh, they help with people, of course, who are blind, who have, they can warn for seizures. Uh, they, they perform any number of tasks that they're trained to help people open cabinet doors and so forth. Um, they start sometimes, we were an organization for a while where a lady trained her dogs to become service dogs when they were puppies. She sent them down, she was up in Lincoln, and she sent them down here to a lady to be trained as puppies. And for the, for the next year, that dog was trained to be a, a uh, started his training to be a, become a service dog. And then the lady had to do the toughest thing I can imagine, and that is to t hand the dog back to uh, to the lady in Lincoln so it could continue its training. I remember one time looking at her, her, her she was just crying her eyes out because she got really attached to this dog. Yeah. Uh, I would too, after, after that length of time. And then it's handed over to the uh, prisoners up there, they do puppies for parole and they get the dog ready to pass the canine good citizen test, which is a good, we'll talk about that as well. And then after that, they start training for their actual therapy work with individuals so that they can help someone. And then they bring the individual in and they spend several weeks working with them before they are released to go out. So that's it's really a, a, it's an intense task that they, they're set out and it takes a lot of work. Uh, to become a service dog. Yes. One question I have then, and I, we kind of talked, I, I was curious, could you, if, if someone just had a pet, they're watching you right now, could they, could their pet become now, not with any special training other than their, their own pet, could they bring it to you and say, I, I think we could do this and we want to, how does that work? How do you get them ready then if someone was watching and wanted to, to get a dog? Oh, to yes. Get a therapy dog, yes. Service dog. Okay. Uh, so no. Some no. dogs are, to be honest, some dogs almost become ser service dogs naturally. Um, yes. But they're, they're one person dogs. You can, they can take them anywhere they want to. They can go in uh, restaurants. They can go anywhere because they, by law, they are trained to help that individual. And the law will make accommodations for that. Uh, therapy dogs, no. Uh, we're out working, helping people, but yeah. not, not on their own. And, and emotional support dogs, I'm gonna go too deep in that. But basically, you have a doctor saying you need to take your pet; it doesn't have to be a dog, with you where you go, and um, they will let you. Although it's somewhat controversial on airlines and so forth, they tend to crack down on that. And uh, you know, I, I got confused again, right? Even when you were talking, but I think I've got it straight now. The difference between service dogs, therapy dogs, and then what was the last group? When emotional support. Right, exactly. And, and I kind of was getting those mixed up in my mind, but I think I've got that straight now and absolutely understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, it's, it is confusing sometimes. And right. the, only, the, only way I, the way I always kept it straight was you, when you think of service dogs, think of one individual because that's what they're helping. You're helping one individual. Right. Therapy dogs are trained to meet as many people as possible. And an emotional support dog... <laughs> is a dog that you feel is necessary for your well-being. I guess it's a therapy dog to you. Right. And your doctor has given you a certificate and you can take that wherever they will allow you to bring it. But mm -hmm. that does not mean they have to, like a service dog. 
Sure. And, and so and there, there is that difference. I, I remember one time I gave a speech and I was telling about all the different levels. And at the end of the speech, they said, well, thank you. We appreciate you bringing in your service dogs. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, well, maybe they didn't hear me real well. Uh, <laughs> because there, there, is a, there is a difference between them. Mm -hmm. uh, now, to answer your question, yeah, we can we can help people get you know, trained for to become uh, therapy dogs. Uh, we don't do training ourselves. Okay. Uh, but we can uh, we can help you and give you advice. There are numerous places around town that do train dogs, and and there are, there are two elements to becoming, I think, a good therapy dog. One is you have your dogs under control. It's trained. It's it's obedient. It does what you tell it to do. And because when we go places, we do not want dogs just kind of wandering off on their own or doing whatever they want, whatever they feel like it. These are these are trained and they walk at your side. And they walk well at your side. And when you tell them to set, they set. That was a big obstacle, we thought, for our greyhound. Because although greyhounds make magnificent therapy dogs, you don't see a lot of them in therapy dog work because their anatomy, they have trouble setting. Uh, and so it was... Some of them, you, some of them never said. Hmm. Uh, my wife, I'll give her kudos. She had four setting within a week after we had. Them. Wow. And so it is, you know, that was a big hurdle there. Once we had that, I was relatively confident he was going to become a, a good therapy dog. But you, you need obedience and you need a temperament. Uh, and temperament is kind of ingrained. You know, they, they have it or they don't. We can work on it a little bit, you know, and I, I always, I question a little bit, <laughs> a little bit off topic, but I question a little bit. I know the, the president, one of his shepherds have had, has had some issues at the White House, right. uh, not behaving as well as he should. Mm -hmm. He said, well, they've sent him off to get trained and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's a training issue, yes. If it's a temperament issue, that could be a more difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, you, you, you just hope that you have a dog that is, that is going to be good temperament. Um, but you can do the training. That's e that's easy. You can do socialization, which does help temperament to a certain extent. Also helps um, with with uh, the training even. Yes. yes, Karen. Karen, go ahead. Yes, thank you. You talk about the temperament, and if you go to see a litter of puppies, let's say maybe five or six of them at least. They're all different personalities and they're all running around doing their own things. Which, which dog can you identify as a, a good temperament for a therapy dog and a litter of little? That is a very, that's an excellent question. If there was a good answer to that, um, we could, we could write a book. I mean, it is really hard to tell from a litter of squirming puppies, which one is going to be, which one is going to be the best. I would say I would look for a couple things. I would look for one somewhere in the middle. I would I would not look one for this that is too shy. Uh, it, you know, we want dogs that are that want to meet people, and so if they're too shy, uh, that may be a problem. Now, again, as a puppy, can they come out of that? Yes. Yeah. So this is kind of hard to hard to judge. Uh, if they're overly aggressive, again, that's hard to judge as a puppy because they're playing and they're goofing off, and it's hard to tell. Too aggressive or not, uh, but somewhere in that middle ground is what I've been looking for. It is hard to tell with our puppies. It's, it's, uh, we, we, for a short time, we experimented with with showing dogs, and we got a our, actually our beer collie that became a therapy dog. We thought it would be a good uh, show dog, and so we we got him as a puppy, and they we got assistance picking him out. He's an excellent. He was an excellent dog, excellent therapy dog, but not a good show dog. Because it just didn't work out, you know. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that, that was an excellent question. But I will say, as far as another thing that people quite often ask is, why have a certain breed of dog? Will they work? And again, this depends on the individual, on the, on the dog. Uh, it's really we're not breed dependent. Uh, every dog can be a good therapy dog, regardless of breed, regardless of it's a, if it's not a purebred. Uh, we have several dogs that uh, came through the program straight out of the pound. Uh, you know, that had no idea what they were, and we all play you know, guessing games: what kind, what dog this is, and what mixture he is, or, or she, and, and they wind up being very good therapy dogs. You just never know. Uh, some dogs that have been criticized 
uh, in the past or have had even laws passed against them like pit bulls and right. and, and American Bulldogs and, and some of those uh, can be really good therapy dogs. People who have them are crazy. It's, it's, it's not so much the dog quite often, it's the owner and how well they've been treated. Hmm. Uh, sometimes people get those dogs and they want them to be aggressive and they train them for that. And you can you can get them there, but if you want a nice sweet dog, you don't. They don't have to be that way. Yes. And I was just wondering, does that mean that there's no uh, type of breed that's banned? It can be any kind of a dog. Any kind of dog, it can be a therapy dog. In fact, okay. the AKC, which recognizes a certain number of breeds, and I've lost track because they bring in new ones every year, but it's, it's almost up to 200 now breeds that they, mm -hmm. that they recognize. Uh, you know, we, you can't show a mixed dog, uh, and there's certain things you can't do. You can't put them through, through their formal obedience, I don't believe. But when it comes to therapy work, you can get a certificate saying that you know, this is your dog, and you want to make it a therapy dog, and they will recognize it as a therapy dog. Okay. And you can even, um, with some money that's sent into the AKC, <laughs> they'll be more than happy to uh, to give you certificate and so forth as you go through certain levels. I think from I think it starts with your first 10 visits and goes up to like 400 visits. Hmm. Titles accompanying, for instance. And we've had a couple in our program. Uh, there, uh, Well, one's still in uh, who uh, were, had over 400 visits, and they wow. get the title of Distinguished Therapy Dog. So uh, yeah, any 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 breed can do it. It's just a question of, of, of work and time. But a lot of the work is dog, work that you should be putting in with your dog. It's now I say work. It's not hard work. It's just steady, and it's just something that you it bonds you deeper with your dog as you do it. It's good times. You want to make it fun for you, and you want to make it for for your dog. Sometimes I ask some people ask me, how long do you work with Forbes to get him to the level he's at? I may have spent you know, five minutes at a time working with him. And when we were getting ready for it to, to get him certified, we might've went up to about 30 minutes and we take him to various places and working, but it doesn't take very long. It's just, you know, you know what you have to do and you do it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, and there, there are places you can go to find, I mentioned the AKC uh, Good Citizen Test which we use an adapting, adaptive form of that as our evaluation tool. But you can go to the AKC website and see what they have. And again, this is stuff that I think everyone would want their dog to be able to do. When you're taking it for a walk, does a dog, you know, is, are you taking a dog for the walk or is a dog taking you for a walk? Right. Have you ever seen someone with their dog just, you know, lunging ahead of you or, or they're lagging behind and you have to drag them almost? Mm -hmm. Or worse yet, I've seen some dogs get tired and always just pick them up, carry them. Uh, good way to walk. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, that, that kind of thing is set. You have to do it down. Uh, you have to do a couple other things. For instance, a recall. Uh, and all this is done on leash. You don't take your dog off leash for this. You go out, you set them down, uh, and then you walk out 20 feet while, while they remain on a set, you tell them to stay and you can give repeat that as many times as you want. And then you come back to them and you tell them to, to remain seat, to remain on a set. You walk out 10 feet and, they, and you call them and they're supposed to come uh, to you uh, straight as can be. Um, and, and there's that part of the test. You, there's a separation test where you leave it with one of the evaluators and you leave the room for three minutes and then test your dog and see what kind of reaction they get. Are they going to be nice? Are they going to howl and, and bark or even, God forbid, growl um, you know, at, at your absence? So those are the kinds of things that they're testing for. We had a few specific things um, for, for our dogs that want to become therapy dogs that we look for. For instance, um, when we're, we go to places, and I haven't mentioned where we go yet, but we we quite often will go to nursing homes and we'll find stuff that maybe people have dropped on the floor. It could be a piece of food, which is not, depending on the food, is not necessarily terrible, but it could be a pill or something that you would not want your dogs to get. So we want we teach them the command, leave it. And when we're evaluating our dogs, we will have treats or dog food or something else that they want. And the dog is expected to walk by that bowl or those treats 
and not lunge for it and not, not definitely not get them. Uh, for some dogs, that's harder than others to, uh, to do. We had a lady, we had a lady one time who misunderstood the directions and she actually thought the she, what she had to do was to take the dog up to the treats, let the dog sniff the treats and tell it to leave it and not ignore them. Uh, that's pretty challenging for a dog to do. Uh, challenging for me to do. So they, uh, you know, the trick is to just keep walking as you tell, tell it to leave. Uh, when I say the perfect place to test to, to uh, train them for that is, is UPCO because they have all those treats down on low levels and the dog has to walk past it. Sometimes they're on the floor where they spilled out. It's good leave it training for your dog. Uh, there's some other things that we do. For instance, uh, we, we test for uh, sound and noise because sometimes you'll, they'll have loud noises. And so right in the middle of the test, we'll have someone drop a pan or they will do something that makes a noise. Quite often, it's, it's related to the places that we go. For instance, uh, we have people that will come up and some of them will put it in wheelchairs. We'll have them walking by with a cane just to see how the, our dogs are going to react to that. Uh, we even have a, a group will come up and they will make over our dog and yell and some of them will be louder than they should be just to test our dog's reaction to, the, to those louder noises. Um, we want dogs that are adaptable to that. And it's, you know, again, every dog is going to be different. We expect them to be a little startled at first, but, you know, they, they have to do it. Um, we, we, yes. It, that just seems like I can't imagine any dog could do that. You know, I just think how hard that would be, it's particularly in a group setting. And, and they will be willing to just set or uh, they'll stay. I just, That's remarkable to me. I think that's amazing training. I guess it, I, it does take some work. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. That would be really remarkable, I would think. Now, they don't have to be, they don't have to put them on a set. They can be standing. In fact, I even teach my dog to command stand, which is easier than sit. Mm -hmm. I think, and they just stand there and that the crowd, but again, the crowd is, is petting them. So they're right. seeking positive and you tell them something, you can tell them, you know, good boy or good dog mm -hmm. all the way through this. So it's not as bad as it seems. And once again, the training for that is socialization. Mm -hmm. The more you do that, the better, the more you get your dog out to places where they're going to meet people and other dogs, the better. And yeah, that, that, that reminds me of what you said, Bill. Cause I had seen you walking before and I would always walk away from you. I always felt like I wasn't supposed to come to you, pet your dogs or something, but now I know the opposite is true. And so if I'm ever walking and I see you and your wife with your dogs, I will come over and pet them if you want me to. Please. Because I realize now that that's what we're supposed to do. And I was always re very respectful. I, I, I always try to avoid someone with pets because I don't want to cause them problems with the dog trying to, you know, no, for, for a therapy dog, it's perfect. We want them yeah, to, to do that. Take our therapy dog in training. That, that is the, exactly the kind of training that we, you know, she is, she's a good dog, but sometimes people, it depends on the individual. Sometimes she's not shy, but she's, you know, she's a little reserved. Let's put it that way. Sure. So the more, the more people she meets, the better. Right. Fortunately, yeah. Carol, like in this COVID thing, we're walking him and I have had to, I've had to tell him, Forbes, don't you know you, you're supposed to be with me because he wants to go over there and be petted every person oh, he sees. Oh, sure. It's been, a yeah. long, it's been a long year for them too. Oh, I bet it has. Yeah, it's been different. Karen, did you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, I, I'd like to ask Bill how he uses his two dogs. I know one's in in training. But the older one, how do you use it? Are you uh, using it personally or are you taking it to nursing homes? And it was a little hard during COVID to get the dogs in and out of nursing homes, I would suppose. Well, it was impossible. In fact, we, if you look on our, and I will talk, mention our website here at the end, but it wasn't, you could not, in fact, to this day, you cannot go into a nursing home with a therapy dog. They're just beginning to open up for royalties and so forth. We did hear one that is going to be opening up, uh, I think, this month uh, for hospice visits. And they were waiting, waiting, waiting for our dogs. We have a protocol that we have to go through before we will go resume our regular visits. Uh, we have to uh, retest our dogs, uh, have a general meeting, make sure everybody's on the same page, make sure that everybody's still there. I mean, I, I we normally have 10 to 20 members. 
But to be honest, I don't know. To me, I have no idea how many members we have right now because a year in a dog's life is a long time. Right. How many are still there? I don't know. Uh, but where we go, that, that's a good topic, I think, um, because once you have passed the exam, and I might add one more thing on the, on the exam, we have our group is somewhat unique in that we have a, a veterinarian that will examine our dog. They'll give it a brief examination, uh, give it a hug, make sure you know they're okay because they see a lot of dogs. So we're looking to see what their attitude is about temperament as well as everything. And they also examine it for pests and parasites because we we pride ourselves on when we take a dog into the facility, anywhere we go, the dog is clean, it's healthy, uh, you know, we are good to go. And so we, we like that. We do go into nursing. That, nursing homes are our bread and butter. Uh, we go into several nursing homes in the area. We have a schedule every month. You know, if it's the third Wednesday, we'll be at Carriage Square. If it's the second, uh, these dates are off, but a year I'm forgetting where we, uh, we went. But uh, the second Thursday, we might go to Living Community and, and we look at various places, nursing homes with their dogs, with as many as we get. Doesn't always have to be the same number. Um, we'd like to take at least two. Um, we have a two eyes policy. You have to have two individuals go and hopefully two dogs. Um, and then we, in addition to nursing homes, we go to noise home uh, once a month. We used to until COVID. Uh, that was enjoyable. Um, and we had several dogs who enjoyed, and the kids loved seeing their dogs there. I want to get into stories. I have a good story from noise home. And then um, we also have hospice work, which is very difficult, I might add, because these people are, are not in the best of health and unfortunately you kind of know the path that they're on but dogs mean so much to them that we we enjoy it um uh, it is difficult at times because you get close to someone and then you come in and they're not there anymore right uh but just to, to at least you know give you one quick story about about that we have had at least a couple that i can think of uh, people who passed and their relatives knew how much our dogs meant to their visits, our dogs' visits meant to them. And so they, they've gotten uh, permission from the funeral home to have our dogs be present at the funeral. Wow. So they Amazing. were present at the funeral because they meant that much to the, to the individual. So hospice is a very meaningful part of our work, uh, mm -hmm. and, and we do enjoy it. Uh, we go to uh, we do a lot of special visits in the area. For instance, uh, once again, I keep saying this until COVID, we went to Northwest Missouri State uh, for finals week uh, because they had what was called a stress less event, things that would reduce stress for students. And our dogs were uh, the hit of the stress less event every time. Uh, literally, they would have, they would be lined up waiting for us. Uh, one year, I think we had some bad weather going to Maryville and we were about five minutes late. We came into this room, and there must have been 75 to 100 kids. Oh, my. You see our you know, seven or eight dogs we had with us. And they were all on their phones because they were kids, and they were playing with their phones. But when they saw our dogs, phones went up, and they came up to our dogs. They had to have a good time. And we got, the, you know, again, but there's always good conversation. When I did this, I always thought to myself, what am I going to talk about? You know, I'm a teacher, and I don't have any trouble talking. Yeah. Uh, I've never met some of these people before. Or how am I going to carry out a conversation? Well, for one thing, you have the best conversation tool that you can have, and that's your dog. You can always talk about your dog and the people. That's what they want to hear about. They want to hear about your dog. And they hear also want to uh, will start telling you about their dogs uh, that they have or have had. And Maryville would tell, tell and we'll have, I haven't seen my shepherd, you know, for the semester. But next week, I'm going to be able to see him. You know, and so we'd ask about their shepherd and they would tell us about that. And that was a, a meaningful story. And I always tell the story of the lady at the nursing home who loved dogs. I mean, she would she would have treats for us. We come in the room, which we'd have to tell her, no, we can't. Our dogs are working. They can't they can't have treats right now. Well, except for the first time, I didn't know that my bearded college, she threw a pepperoni, which was this long treat on the floor. And before I could say no, he snarfed it up. But it was OK. Uh, but she told me one time, she said, you know, I have my dog with me. And it was like, uh, I forget now, what it was a great Pyrenees maybe or something. It was a very large dog. I knew I didn't see it in there. Well, okay, well, maybe she's just thinking back. And she could see that I was kind of questioning that. And she pointed up and she had brought her dog's urn 
with her to the nursing home. You know, her dog still meant that much to her. Mm-hmm. And so um, we made sure that we have we would see her every visit that we made to that nursing home because she she dogs really meant a lot to her. And she always, by the way, would have little she took my advice to heart. She had little packets of treats that she would give them to me and I'd pass them out to the dog after we had our visit. So oh. like, Right. So yeah, it's, it's uh, a very meaningful. We, we make other special visits. For instance, um, I just made one up to Maryville well, a couple of weeks ago. I talked to a club up there, a, a behavioral disorder uh, club that they as part of their psychology department. We we're talking about dogs and what they could do there. We made visits to group homes in the past. Um, one of our more significant visits I think we make is to the Royal Kids Camp, which is a camp put on by First Christian. Mm-hmm. It's for kids who have had some problems at home and so forth, um, and and they, to give them a chance to to get away and to have a good time. Uh, some of them are have been taken away and put in foster homes, um, but our dogs uh, are usually there when they get ready to send them off because they're a little reluctant to leave whatever security they have, including foster homes. And there was one girl in particular who. These are dogs are able to console people as I pet them. This one girl would not be consoled. She just was crying, crying. And they finally got her on the bus. Uh, man, it's going to be tough. But when we went out for a regular visit in two days, the dog, you know, they were fine. And she she went up to all of our dogs and petted them, was having a great time. Mm-hmm. So you know, we, we go, we do make a variety of special visits. We've been down to Civic Arena. We go to, we've been to Cameron. Where they've had a 4 H event. Uh, we've been to schools. We also do, um, I just, just hit me, we do a, a book buddies program, which is part of our, our organization. And every month uh, at East Hills Library, you can see kids reading to our dogs. Uh, they found this is another benefit that comes from therapy dog work. Having kids read to a dog, particularly in a non judgmental manner, the dog's not going to correct them if they mispronounce a word. They just read. And they, you know, they leave the dog. One dog, and not unfortunately, he's passed, but he was such a phenomenal reading dog because he would swear he's following along. He would move his little head. He was a chihuahua. He would move his little head back and forth as they were reading the page. And it looked like, you know, there's those little men following along as they are reading, as they are reading the book. Uh, the kids always enjoyed reading the hand. But then we have others that are, uh, I was talking about breeds. We have Chihuahuas. We have an English Mastiff who's 215 pounds. Uh, he's also a book buddy. Uh, we go to Washington Park with our dogs. And we also have started in the last, well, until last year, we were going to schools where, where kids at school would be also reading to our dogs. Uh, and they found, and we've heard from people, that reading levels have gone up. It's been beneficial for, for the kids. Uh, to read to our read to our dogs, so we we enjoy that. And we look forward to getting back to that. It's a it's a definite part of our program. Yes. The question I had, we, we got a, a question pop up. I noticed, and, and I, I want to add another one to that. They wanted to know how old would a dog need to be? When is there an age limit? Like when you start the training? And then the Good second question. question that I thought I'd like to attach to that one. How long could you expect a dog to last after they've been trained and now they're doing this? If they're, how long what, of a period could you expect that they could be a therapy dog? All right. All right. Both of those are really good questions. Uh, our group, and it, it may depend on on the group, but most groups, including ours, you have to be at least a year old. Uh, we don't want uh, want to get the puppy out of them a little bit. Okay. Sometimes puppies are really hard to train. Oh, that's the, really one of the best times to start your training. Uh, to become, you know, to get bees training and so forth, kind of ingrained in them. But we want them to be at least a year old before uh, we will put them through our evaluation. Okay. Um, and then every, to make sure they're still doing what they're supposed to be doing every two years, we will put them through a, what's called a recertification, which is kind of a modified version of the test plus the observations that we've been making about, you know, concerning the dog as we've gone along to see that they're still performing well because dogs are like people and you know, people's personalities will change, uh, how they view things are gonna change. Uh, you know, as they get old, they may get a little cranky, uh, you know, just like some people do. And so we have to reevaluate that. As far as the top age, 
uh, as long as you think you, your dog can do it. And we always advocate, we always tell people you have to be your dog's advocate. Now, that's a key part of the program. When you think it's time for your dog to retire, nobody's going to question that. We, you know, we might tell them that the dog's going to be missed. Uh, we certainly hate to see it, but we understand that he needs to retire. Uh, we've had dogs that were 12, 13 years old uh, who were still therapy dogs. And I've heard of some in other parts of the country that were like 15, 16, they were still therapy dogs. Wow. But again, it depends on where you can take them. You, you know, again, uh, some places there might be steps involved. Can they go up and down steps for easy? Mm -hmm. right. uh, uh, how tired do they get? Because this can be, believe it or not, just getting petted a lot can be tiring for dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. All of our dogs, when they get through a visit, will come home and crash for, for uh, several hours. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, I know it was just mine for a while, but nope, they uh, they will get tired when they're out on, on visits. So there is no maximum age, though. I mean, it, it's, uh, it kind of depends on what you want to do. You have to, again, you, you look, and I always tell people, look through visits through your dog's eyes, and that's part of that. When is it time your dog is not enjoying it? You know, he used to love to go. Uh, he may still love to go, and then as soon as he gets there, he's ready to go home. You know, it's just too tiring for him. It's time to take him out of the, of the, mm -hmm. the program. Uh, but I do think it's an important element to see that visit through your dog's eyes. That eliminates a lot of problems. For instance, that pill on the floor, you should see it before your dog sees it. You should see it if a person's coming up uh, that you don't think is going to treat your dog very well, is going to hug it too tightly, uh, particularly if you have a small dog or, um, you know, doesn't understand what it means. Boys, when I see someone coming up pet a dog, you know, so jet, pet gently. You know, and, and you have to, um, you know, if I, if I question that at all, I want to make sure that they're going to treat our dogs well. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, we're going to leave. Um, we, have to, we have to be our dog's advocate, and, and we are willing to do that. And again, part of that's training, though. I mean, I, I mentioned before, and I should have shown it when I had Forbes in here, some of you may have noticed, it's a really long tail. And I'm aware of that when we go on visits, particularly with kids, one of the things they might want to do is pull Forbes' tail. So I tried not to let that happen, but just in case I didn't see it, when Forbes was, when we first got Forbes, um, I don't do it much anymore, but I would stroke his tail. Every morning, I would stroke his tail four or five times so he was used to someone handling his tail. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't pull it, but I did I did stroke it. So you have to you have to understand the visit from how your dog is perceiving things. And that will make it go smoother for the dog, for you, and will provide a better visit for, for people. Very good. Hope that answered your questions. Yeah, absolutely. That are you going to would you like to oh Karen first? Let's take Karen's question. Go ahead and, and ask him your question. No, you ask the go. question you're going to ask. <laughs> well, one well, thing I was, I was going to. Yeah, go ahead. My my leg time. I was going to say, Bill, that as you've been telling me stories, I think I had a therapy dog when I was seven years old and didn't realize it. She was my little family, my first little dog, my family dog, and faithful up until I was 19 when she passed away. And she was like my best friend. Um, we didn't even know about therapy dogs in those days, did we? I mean, they were just our pets, and they meant so much to us. Did you ever have a childhood pet that you look back oh, yeah. on that could have been like the best therapy dog ever? Yes, I've had several dogs who I, yeah, I wish I would have known about the program before now. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great big Akita when I was younger, than, and we put through formal obedience. Great dogs. Sometimes people think Akitas are aggressive. He was the most gentle soul. He would have been an excellent therapy dog, but we didn't know about it. You know, and I uh, had a Cocker Spaniel when I was young. That would have been a really good therapy dog. Uh, yeah, there, there's, I've had several that would have made good therapy dogs. And I might add, you bring up a significant point here, and that is, even if they don't make good therapy dogs for other people, we talked about you know the qualities of a therapy dog of lowering blood pressure and reducing stress level and so forth. They dogs do that in our own lives. They may not be therapy dogs for other people, but they can be your therapy dog you know, because that is a service that they do for you uh, at home when you've had a stressful day or whatever. It's 
comforting to pet your dog and, and to look after their needs. Uh, it, it, they are amazing creatures. And I think that is one of the things that they do for us. So, yeah, there, there are a lot of good therapy dogs, and there have been for a long time. It's just a question of, of getting them identified. You know, we when we talk about coping and we think about that, I think everyone realizes that a pet really does provide that way to cope for yourself. What a comfort to have a pet there with you. You know, we weren't getting out much, but just to have a pet there that you could care for and pet, and that that is such a huge help for all of us. But I think it's also wonderful to know that you can take this and help other people cope. I think that's the point of your therapy dogs. What a gift you're giving people in the community when you take those dogs out and help other people cope with the, the situations that we've gone through this past year. That's why I'm really anxious for you to be able to get out again. I don't have a therapy dog, but I want you to get yours out because you know, people are missing them. I'm, I'm sure of that. Yeah, we, we've done it. You know, a couple of little things. For instance, last Halloween, we walked around Carriage Square. We, we currently couldn't go in. We dressed our dogs up. If you wanted to you dress your dog up in, in a costume. And we watched them around the facility. And the people would come up and they would, they would see our dogs. And you could see the smiles on their faces. It wasn't as good as seeing them, but it was the best we could do. Sure. And I was touched by the fact that some of them were reaching out to pet our dog. They couldn't because of the glass. Sure. You just see that they were they were trying. Uh, so yeah, it, it does. We know it means a great deal, and, and we are we are more than ready to get started. And it does bring a lot of satisfaction. I mean, to, to us, our dogs enjoy it, uh, people enjoy it, and we get a lot of good work. The only thing is, you have to know you're not the star of the show. People don't know our names. Uh, people, what we go places, they will not know Bill Loose from Adam. Yeah. They'll know Forbes. Yes. Uh, and that oh, here's Forbes. And I'll say, here's Bill. Here's Forbes. <laughs> and you know we reinforce that as much as we can yeah. because we do have people that you know we've seen it. I was a lady at a nursing home um, we go to. And she was on the phone all the time. That she would pass her day every time we went in there. And this was for a couple of years. Every visit she would be on her phone. But every time we came in there, she would say, "Oh, dogs are here," and hang up the phone. But she wouldn't even say <laughs> bye. And I think she knew how important that yeah. was. Um, <laughs> You know, and and we sometimes will leave little calling cards. I don't know if you how well this is going to show on camera, but this is uh, Forbes's. You know, not at the angles here. I never make a good weatherman. Uh, this is a therapy dog card that we have for Price Press Therapy Dogs, and this is for, it's like a trading card baseball card, and we give this out to people uh, when we, we it has Forbes name on the back. It has things that he likes on the back, uh, some uh, treats, yeah. his favorite treat. Uh, what he likes doing, uh, what his birthday is, and people will, you know, not only kids, but we've had senior citizens who will post this on their wall uh, because, you know, they will say, well, we want people to see our dog that came or the dog that came to visit us. So it means something uh, to these people when we go see. That is such a clever idea. I love your trading card. Thank you for showing that. That's very special. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we enjoy. I mean, again, there's a lot of good stories that have came out of some of our visits too. Mm -hmm. uh, I might share a couple okay. uh, that we've had that were it, it's left an impression on us uh, when we made our visits. There was a gentleman that we we used to see at Carriage Square all the time. He would set out where these halls came together. He liked to see people go by. Mm -hmm. It was extremely hard of hearing, and he had very short-term memory issues. And I had the bearded collie at that time, a big hairy dog. If you've seen Tim Allen's movie, The Shaggy Dog, that's what I had. Uh, a big hairy dog, and we would go down the hall, and we come every time we, he would see our dog, he would say, "That's a hairy one." I mean, he would yell it, but he was hard of hearing, and people oh, I was the room, would hear him say that. And I got to hear that three or four times, and he would tell me the next thing he would say is, "Did you know dogs are, are can tell time?" And I no, I didn't. I didn't know that at first, and he would tell me how dogs could tell time, and that he, when he was a child, he would take his dog with him to school, and the dog would go with him, and then the dog would go home, and he would go into school. But every time he got out of school in the afternoon, the dog would be there to to greet him. So dogs must be able to tell time. 
Now, as he's telling me this story over and over again, because we would go by this one hall, like well, those three wings shooting off of it. Right. So we would hear this story three times every night because it was a new story to him every time. Right. And you know, at first a little frustrated, but then it began to mean something to him, and then I began to notice certain details. When he was telling me this story, he was petting my dog. In his mind, I think he was petting his dog. Right. And then quite often his eyes would be closed as he was telling me this story. So he was back in his, you know, when he was a child, having this really important memory to him uh, about this dog that meant so much to him. Uh, that is probably the most meaningful. For a long time, I couldn't hardly tell that story because it meant so much to me. Uh, and again, one time we went in and he wasn't there, so it was tough. But when he when he passed, but we again, we, I think our dog made a difference for him uh, near the end of his life. Mm -hmm. and so we. Um, and my wife, that we used to go to UCP, there was a child in there that had a helmet. She was non-responsive and so forth. But she became more responsive than she ever had been with our bearded collie. She actually even petted it. When they said that was amazing for her to be able to do that. And so uh, we have a variety of different stories, how meaningful it's been. Sometimes they're kind of funny. There was a boy at uh, Noise Home and his or home environment, I guess he'd had a bad experience with the with some dogs or something before, but he was very afraid of them. They couldn't even really get him to come into the room for a long time. And he finally came in and he didn't have much to do. He kept looking at my dog, or you know, this he had Forbes by that time. And Forbes was kind of striking look at it. and he kept didn't know and he got getting closer and closer as the as the hour was going on. And then he would come up and he would touch the dog and he would run. Uh, and then he touched him again and he would run. And then by the end of the visit, he was petting him. And I went, well, this has been a pretty good visit. He actually petted our dog before we got ready to go. And I'm putting on my jacket and I look back and he's not like petting our dog. He's kissing our dog on the butt. Uh, but he was showing affection for our dog uh, that he never had before to another animal. And, now, and after that, he looked forward to our dog coming every time. Hmm. And so we would have stuff my wife found uh pictures of some of the not pictures but drawings of some of the dogs that we were taking and so people could um the kids could color them and we'd ask to see them the next time we come sometimes they forget but we were there we always made sure they had our, our uh, trading cards as well mm -hmm. so there are all kinds of, of neat stories that you get out of it uh, there was another lady at a nursing home she would send out a scout she was confined to her bed but she could see us walking by her window we came into the facility, and even though we always visited her because we knew how important it was, she would send her roommate down to tell us to make sure we saw her before we left because she wanted to see her dogs that much. So we tried to do that. Very good. Would That's you like the question I had was about the council you belong to? I, I don't know much about the Pony Express. Is it? Uh, your organization, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. How yeah, are people with you, or what is it? Yeah. We are part of uh, the Missouri Extensions, Buchanan County Missouri Extension Service. We're fortunate that we have partnered with them and one of their auspices. Uh, when we we used to be part of a group in, in Lincoln, and then we decided it was too far to go up to be tested, so we could do our own thing down here. And we were blessed that they were able, they were willing to take us on, and so. Uh, we partner with them, and if you want more organization, more information about our group, if you go to the Buchanan County Extension Service website, uh, they will they have information about our group there. We have our own page. We have everything we do for our certification, for our evaluation. They have my name and phone number, and I will go ahead and mention that now. It's 232-5162. If you're interested in therapy work, uh, give me a call. Or go into the, that website and, and see what's there because there's a trove of information there about the guidelines, what we expect uh, of people within our group, uh, and particularly on the evaluation. But again, the part, the, the meat of it is talking with someone who who's done it for a while just to see what what it's like. But we we work with them um, and we go to some of their events. We're having I think the Steam the Steam Festival. They're going to be part of that, and, and as a result, okay. we'll be part of that in August. Uh, it's been a good partnership, hopefully, both for both groups. So. Good. I, I would like for you to say your phone number one more time, a little slower. We made a try, but I don't think we got it quite. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I get going a little too quickly. Sure, uh, my I phone do. number is 232-5162. Okay. okay, I got it now. And again, you, you go to the, just Google Buchanan County Missouri Extension Service and look for Pony Express Therapy Dogs, and mm -hmm. we are there. Okay, good. Thank you. Good information. Karen, go ahead. Yes, Bill. I have a question that if a person viewing this show sees a need for a family member to have a therapy dog, a personal one, but they don't know how to get it trained, are they able to purchase a trained therapy dog or are they required to purchase a dog and then personally go through training like with your organization? Okay. Um, well, several things. You know, again, we don't train, but we we do clue you in. We will tell you some places that you can go. I hesitate to start mentioning them because I'll I'll leave somebody out. But pet stores, I know, will do it. And there's a, various places around that you can look that will train train dogs um, for the obedience part of that. And again, the only I have seen there there's there's been an organization or two that I have seen around the country that have claimed that they will sell trained dogs that can be therapy dogs. Hmm. I'm a little skeptical of that because when you buy a dog that's been trained, yes, they've been trained, hopefully, and they're trained to do well for that individual that trained them. But when they send them to you, that could be a different story down the road. Um, they may not be as well trained as, as they let on because the dog is used to someone else training it. And you have to be, you have to establish yourself as, as the train. That's why I recommend, we do recommend that uh, anyone who wants to do surgery work, work with their own dogs uh get them trained do that socialization um uh, try it out see see what see what it's like if you like it talk to our organization come and see what we do we will make arrangements uh for you to see to see us in action if you want to see uh, our dogs being read to come once we get this started again i wish anyone that was going to be i could tell you exactly when we used to go the first saturday of every month uh to east hills library and you could see our therapy dogs and and See what they what they can do. It, you know, it's not perfection. It's not formal obedience. And when I say a dog's mm -hmm. supposed to set and they're supposed to do this and that, you know, we expect a little leeway to be given. Uh, for instance, one time we were, when we were going to Lincoln, uh, we went to this place and had a flower garden or something. And every dog on the recall wanted to go through this flower garden. They were supposed to come straight to us. They were uh -huh. taking this circuitous roundabout route. Well, it wasn't the dog's fault. It was where we were doing it, so we had to make allowances for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we only this is not strict formal obedience, but we do want the dog. You do we do ask that people demonstrate that the dog is under your control. Um, but I do recommend that people train their own dogs. Um, you know, now you could take them. One of the best things to do is find uh, or find some place that's giving classes, and so you can work with other dogs because you not only have to. Work, to have that dog trained so you can take it someplace and they like to be petted and so forth. There's going to be other dogs there, particularly our dogs. Uh, before we go into the facility, we have a little session called meet and greet where the dogs get a chance to sniff each other. And I mean, they're, they're good friends and they have, you know, haven't seen each other for a little while. And in this case, a long while. So we give them a chance to be dogs a little within reason before we go into that facility. And then when they go in, they're expected to behave well and they're going to be close to other dogs when they go in. So that's part of it as well. Uh, and so doing a class, an obedience class is, or two, uh, is important. Um, now we will, in addition to our evaluation, because it's based off the, the canine good citizen, uh, we have had in the past, we've given the canine good citizen test as well as our test. You can be certified by both and get AKC recognition if you so desire that you don't have to. It's going to cost you a little bit, next to nothing, uh, to get it. Uh, and then you can go on from there. Okay. And we have, I might say, this is the, the reason I didn't have this on. This is when you pass our evaluation, your dog will get this. And this is what's called a cape. I don't think I call it a cape. This is what it is. And it says therapy dog. And, and, and actually, the first thing you're going to get is a bandana because that's a a probationary period before you actually become a therapy dog. Uh, you have to go through uh, a few months of visits 
like make sure that, that you're good for the program, that your dog is going to be good on actual visits. It's on OJT, on the job training. And if they pass that as well as evaluation, then they become a therapy dog. We've had dogs that did tremendous in evaluation, but they wanted no part of a visit for some reason. And so it didn't work out for them. If they do, they get this, and they wear it on every visit. Didn't have one for because if I put that on him, he would be sure that he was going on a visit and would uh, would not see the best. Would not have seen the best behaved for him. He wants to go. He he would be more than ready to go. Um, my bad. These stars that you see here on the side are the stars that he won uh, or he's earned based on the number of visits that he's made. Uh, he's made about 175 visits now. Next up is 200. He'll get another star from our group and also be eligible for the Therapy Dog Excellent title from the AKC. So uh, this is what, uh, it's kind of what we do with, and uh, we keep our dogs busy in, when we can. Wonderful. That is such a wonderful thing for you to be involved in. I appreciate it so much. Karen, you have a question? Yes. Yes, I, I do. Bill, do you ever take your therapy dogs to church with you? And I also would like to extend an invitation to our Sunday school classes at church. I think they would just love to know a little bit more about this and love to pet your dogs. And uh, I just extend an invitation if you need to ever train one to come to our church, to our Sunday school classes and let us pet your dogs. <laughs> you know, we... Uh... We may take you up on that. We'll have to be in contact. I, we would love to do that. Now, once again, we need to do um, the preliminaries of having you know, a group visit and, and retest all our dogs to make sure we're ready to go. But uh, we hope to have that process done by the middle of June. So, yeah, very deaf. Keep us in mind. Give, give me a call. Uh, I'd love to, And we do have mentioned churches. We do. We haven't done it for a little while. But we had we had a lady in the past who would take her dog as part of her ministry almost. She she did a lot. She was a minister, but she did a lot of work within the church, and she would take her dog to church with her. And she also did some uh, church work with the nursing home in Savannah, the Marin. And she would take her dog with. Her. So yes, we have done um, work in churches before. Um, you know, in devotion, a lot of times, often with with kids in the church as part of a, a, a kids portion of the sermon. Because you get, you're getting your the point that you want to get across to them, you're petting the dog, and so again, it has kind of a, a double meaning. So yes, we would love to come. Oh, that's thank you for having that idea, Karen. That is wonderful. That would just be uh, just such a wonderful thing for the kids. They would love that. Let me ask you this: Is this just are your visits uh, just scheduled in Buchanan County, or do you go out a little bit farther than that? We do on special occasions. Uh, now we did go to Laverna for for a while for for doing hospice work. Uh, again, I don't know. That's the thing we need to do is determine where we're going to be going as these places open up. But we do want to uh, to get back. We did go up there. Um, we did special visits. Well, we do special visits definitely outside of Buchanan. I kind of mentioned the one we go to Maryville quite often. Um, so yeah, we do special visits, regular visits where we stay mainly in Buchanan County uh, and send in, right here in St. Joe. There's enough nursing homes and, and other places for oh, us sure. to go uh, to keep us busy. Right. Okay. But but membership would could be you wouldn't be a resident of Buchanan County necessarily to be a member of your group. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. We have uh, we have uh, a lady who lived in Mount City who. Uh, we hope to be part of our group again. Uh, she's coming back in, I think, with another dog. Uh, we have a lady who lives in Forest City, uh, who I bumped into, by the way. This, I, I look for <laughs> therapy dogs all the time. I bumped into her on a walk one time. She just gotten this little, little dog, cute dog, and yeah, this would be a good therapy dog. And and now she is in our organization, and um, along with my wife, she's kind of sharing the secretary treasurer's duty. So um, she kind of worked with another that big ink mastiff I mentioned. I ran into uh, him and his owner on a walk. Um, so we're, I'm always scouting when I, when, I, when I see if I can find a good therapy dog. I'm you know, let's see what it can do. Okay. Well, we, I noticed, I just looked, we are coming to the end of our hour and I have so appreciated everything you've shared with us today. Did we miss anything? Was there anything else you wanted to tell us? 
Uh, I can't think of any. I, I just stress to people, you know, I hope I haven't made it sound really hard. It's not. It just if you want to be, if you think you have a good therapy dog, you know, talk with us about it, train your dog, work, your, work with your dog. In your spare time, it doesn't take all that long. Okay. Look at his temperament around people, around other dogs. And if you think you would like this, to do this, uh, I would highly recommend that. It's very satisfying. It's good activity for you and your dog. Um, you know, it's just an excellent, excellent program. So um, I, I enjoy it greatly, and I would like to see as many people. The more people we have, the more places we can go. Absolutely true. And it sounds like you have a lot of work you could do. And I think it's so beneficial and so valuable. So I encourage everyone to get their dog trained and get ready to go. Thank you so much. I, I think thank that you. we really do appreciate that. And Karen, thank you for being here. And uh, oh, it, it's been a joy to, to be with you. It has. It's lots of fun. I thank love, you. Bill. Love the topic. Right. Love the topic. Absolutely. <laughs>